Hey there, I'm Corey Helton. I'm a productivity god. Every day I start my motivated morning at 4 a.m. with three hours of cardio, weightlifting, and jujitsu while I listen to Joe Rogan and Gary Vee simultaneously. After I hit the gym, it's streets to the kitchen where I down a full breakfast prepared by my own personal chef. I don't need coffee though because my energy comes from within. After that, it's straight to the hospital. I have three different meetings on my commute with my financial advisor, my life coach, and my spouse where we have our five minutes of daily affection. That's all though, there's no time for love when it's all about the grind. Once I get to the hospital, I save the lives of 17 patients and deliver a baby in the parking lot. I get two phone calls, first from the president who personally congratulates me on my achievements for the day, and second from Big Pharma who says they're mailing my bonus incentive check. Finally, before I call it a day, my personal relaxation guru takes me through a 37-minute guided meditation. I then don my whoop band, my aura ring, and turn on brainwave sounds to achieve 110% sleep quality. As I fall asleep, I can't help but think to myself, God, it's good being me. Okay, so none of that's true. Yes, people think I'm a little insane. After all, I do have like a bazillion hobbies and interests, and I somehow get all of it done in a given day. I run a Star Wars books company, I'm into finance and investments, I like playing video games, I've recently really gotten into Formula One and sim racing, this is a full sim rig that I have parked in my office over here, and uh, I don't know, I have a lot of things that I like doing in a given day. Oh yeah, and I am also a doctor, that part is also true, and I did help deliver a baby in a parking lot once. But underneath all that, I'm just a normal guy with pretty bad ADHD and a lot of things that I'm interested in doing. See, the thing is, I just like being busy. I like having something to work toward. It gives me a sense of accomplishment or success to feel like I'm working on my goals or I'm meeting the deadlines of my own personal projects. And I've literally tried everything to keep my life straight, whether it's apps on my phone or on my computer or some kind of special device or keeping notes in a little black book, which I used to do. Because at the end of the day, I really just want to feel like I've accomplished something. Like, to know that my day wasn't wasted. Even if I did spend the whole day on the sim rig, because that still counts. I think that's why it's important to have some kind of productivity system, or organizational system, or to-do list system. Because keeping your life in order, I think, gives you kind of a sense of purpose or success. That's why in this video, I'm going to tell you all about a simple productivity system that is based on something that I use myself to kind of give some more order to your life. I think a productivity system has like three main components, right? We have a calendar, keep track of appointments and dates and birthdays and obligations and meetings and also maybe the stuff you don't really think of, like a dedicated time for rest and relaxation or date nights and things like that. You also have some kind of to-do list, right? Some kind of simple system to check off items that you need to get done as well as kind of using it to track the next thing that you need to get done. And lastly, you need some kind of system for taking notes and storing information, something you can look back to later and reference throughout your life and your day and whatever. Now, yes, you can get way more complicated than that. I've learned that a lot of the productivity gurus on YouTube, they kind of advocate that you do get more complicated than that. But I can tell you from my own personal experience that sometimes simpler is a little better. And that's why I'm going to use this time to kind of explain to you why I think a pretty simple system will really get you like 98% of the way. Luckily, all three of these things, a calendar, a to-do list, and a note system, is all accessible on your phone. And like I said, I've spent a lot of time over the years testing different systems, writing them down, or using apps on the phone. And I've essentially found that some kind of system that interfaces between your phone and your computer that you can interact with on a daily basis is really going to get you like 99% of the way there. Apple Notes and iCal are pretty dang good for what you need. Um, now I've seen some people use like the Reminders app on their iPhone as kind of like a to-do list app and I've really never found success with that. I just don't really like the Reminders app. It's kind of clunky and it doesn't check off very well and it's always sending you notifications. I'm just not a huge fan of the Reminders app. For my to-do list, I use an app called Things 3. It's Mac only and it's a little expensive because you have to buy it separately on like the phone and your iPad and your Mac computer. And the Mac app is by far the most expensive. Okay, so yes, I did spend like 50 bucks on this really expensive app, but I do generally use it like every single day of my life. And a lot of the features that are built in, I actually use. It's not one of those software that just has all these features that you never use. I do generally use most of the features that are built into Things 3. And I also appreciate that instead of it being a subscription service that I pay for every single month, I just pay for it once and then I don't really have to think about it ever again. 
Okay, so Apple Notes, iCal, and Things 3 are what I'm advocating that you should use here. What if you're a PC or an Android user? Well, in that case, I recommend Google Calendar, which I've used extensively, Google Keep, which is a notes app, which is pretty dang good, and then Todoist is the to-do list app that I've also used that's really, really good. Now, Todoist is a great option for Mac and for PC because it's kind of on the web, right? The free version gives you enough stuff to get started, and the pro version is only like five bucks a month. A little more digestible, I guess, than $50 even though you technically have already paid for that $50 if you use it for over a year. So something to think about. Now look, there's a ton of apps out there and I understand the temptation to want to try all of them because I've been there. You want to search for what's the best notes app and what's the best calendar and all those types of things. And if you want a system that you're going to use, you really need to pick something that you're kind of already familiar with. Now once you get your head wrapped around the system and using the system and getting your head wrapped around this kind of productivity world a little bit, it's easy to change gears and use something more complex. But right out the gate, I highly suggest you just kind of forget about the apps themselves for a second just pick something that you're already familiar with and then start using it okay so you have your apps now what now a lot of people will kind of stop here right we have a note system we have a calendar we have a to-do list and you start using them right there's nothing wrong with that i myself really didn't have a system an organizational system for these things for a long time honestly years i've worked without any kind of organizational system and I think honestly, just having some type of productivity system like this in the first place that you regularly fall back on, I think that gets you like 90% of the way there, right? And this is not a new idea. Uh, one of my favorite books in the productivity space is a book called Getting Things Done by David Allen. And there's an incredible quote in that book that really stuck with me the first time I heard it. And that is that your mind is for having ideas, not holding them. And it's based on this idea that you take these note-taking systems and these life-tracking systems, they're really designed to get information out of your head that you're trying to remember, you're trying to store, and getting them out on paper so you can deal with them later on. And this is a bit genius in my opinion, right? I mean, think about it. How many times have you forgotten an important date or you've been late to a meeting because you didn't know that it was happening, it wasn't on your calendar, or you forgot where you were in a project because you got interrupted? Now, I've had all of these things happen to me even with this digital productivity system. And that brings me to this really important point, which is I think that it is one thing to have a digital system. It's another thing to use it effectively. Now, earlier this year, I stumbled on this really incredible organizational system in Tiago Forte's book called Building a Second Brain. Now, it's based on this idea that we get the information out of our heads and we put it on paper, but let's organize it in a way that we can quickly access it. Now, the method that he talks about in his book is called the PARA method. Now, PARA is an acronym. It stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archives. And the method itself is relatively simple. It's really just like a folder structure that you store your information in that makes it really fast to get to because you know exactly where to look. So let me walk you through exactly what the PARA method is and how you can apply it. Okay, so the P in PARA stands for projects. Now, projects are things that have like a foreseeable beginning and end, right? It starts somewhere and it finishes somewhere. Now, this could be really anything that kind of fits that equation, right? Creating a video like on YouTube, like I'm doing here, could be a project. Redecorating a bedroom, uh, completing a research project, buying a house, planning an anniversary dinner. These are all examples of tasks or activities that kind of have a beginning and end that might have a to-do list with them and then maybe some notes and research and things that you've written down about those projects, right? Now, those are projects. So in your notes and your to-do list apps, you're going to have a high-level folder called projects, and that's going to store the to-do list and the notes for related to those tasks, right? And because we have the same structure, this PARA, this P-A-R-A, because we have a projects folder in both our notes app and our to-do list app, and they're both named pretty much the same thing, like plan my trip to Cancun is the project and both my to-do list and my notes app, because they're named the same thing, it's really quick and easy to get to both of them. You starting to see the benefit there yet? So for example, if I'm planning a trip to Cancun on my to-do list item, I would have all my items that I gotta get done, like, you know, book my plane tickets, book the hotel, research activities, you know, those things would be the to-do list items, right? And then in my notes app, I would have the information related to those things by like, you know, I might say, I might have a list of the Airbnbs that I've looked at that I want to show my wife later. I might have a list of activities that I've jotted down by doing some internet research or watching YouTube videos or something. And because in both of my apps, my notes app and my to-do list app, I have this title, Plan a Trip to Cancun, right? It's very quick and easy to access both what I need to do for the project and notes that I've taken about them. 
Okay, so let's talk about areas, because areas are parts of your life that have a bit of a recurring element to them, right? It's, area, it's places that you're going to come back to frequently and often. My job as a doctor, learning an instrument, investing in finance, maybe travel, these are all areas of my life that I may want to keep some notes for or to keep maybe a big picture to-do list like of songs that I want to learn or places that I want to visit or maybe all my licensing information as a doctor. I could put that in the doctor areas of my notes app. Areas are these kind of broader categories that don't really fit into a beginning and an end format, right? They're things that I keep having to come back to. And you want to organize your areas in a way that you can quickly get to it, right? Because that's the whole principle is you want to be able to quickly get to the information. So in your notes and your to-do list apps, you want to have this high-level folder called areas that's kind of organized in a logical fashion that you can get to quickly. In my areas folder, I would have like medical career, right? And in that folder, I might have all my notes related to my licensing information or things related to my career, right? And those are all things that you wanna kind of put into the areas category. Okay, so we've talked about projects and areas. That's the first two letters of the acronym. Let's talk about resources. Now, resources are kind of like a digital file cabinet kind of organized into topics that you may want to reference at some point. And they're more like traditional notes and information storage than kind of projects and areas. Now, I don't really have to dig into my file cabinet very often, but when I do, I'm glad that it's nice and organized and I know exactly where to look for or what I'm looking for. So for example, when I read Tiago Forte's book, Building a Second Brain, I found it prudent to take some notes on that book, right? And, or, you know, just get on the internet and borrow some notes from somewhere, like a blog or something like that, and put those notes into my, my own personal notes, right? Because I probably want to come back to that information later when I read a book, especially on like productivity or a self-help book, right? It's prudent to take some notes on it and then store those notes for when you can come back to it later. And I even actually referenced those notes when I was making this video, right? Another example is like a doctor, you know, I have a lot of personal notes of my own medical references and drug dosing and things that I've refined over the years, right? And all this information is stored in my resources folder, right? It's stuff that I might need later, I might need at some point, and it might take a little digging to get to because it's very hierarchical and there's a lot of different folders and different notes, right? But with a little bit of digging, because it's organized in a fairly logical fashion, I can kind of quickly get to it. I know exactly where to look for it. So in your notes app, you're gonna have this high level folder called resources, and you're gonna use that to store your notes in more of a topical fashion. Now, your projects in your areas are more organized, like projects are organized by like, by project, right? If something has a beginning and end date and your areas are organized kind of into the big areas of your life, like travel or your career or things like that. Resources is a little more like a traditional note system. And if you already have any kind of note system right now, you probably have something kind of like a resources folder already that has things like topical. Like my own personal resources folder has got a lot of book notes in it, right? And they're organized by the type of book it is, right? If it's history or if it's marketing or business or entrepreneurship, you know, it's kind of broken down into topics, right? So all of that is going to be organized in this very topical fashion in your notes app. Now, this is where the PAR method kind of differentiates itself a little bit because you don't really need resources that often for a to-do list app. Now, Maybe it is helpful to have a resources folder in your to-do list app, or maybe you have a checklist of like bucket list items or something like that, you know, travel places or something like that, um, and then it matches the resources folder. But at the same time, like most of that information just stays kind of in your notes app and you can kind of leave it there. So me personally, I don't even actually use a resources area inside my to-do list app. So that might be something that you consider. Finally, the archives folder. Let's talk about that. now. Archives are stuff that I don't really need right now or for the foreseeable future, but I may want to come back to it at some point. So basically by putting something in the archives, we're getting it out of the way. And it has to be information that we definitely don't really feel like we need, uh, but we don't want to trash it, right? So we might need it in the future, but instead we're just going to kind of store it for later. And because it's in this kind of like old information folder called archives, right? We know exactly where to look for it if we do ever want to come back to it. So what do you want to keep in your archives? Well, for example, earlier this year, my wife and I, we sold our house in Tennessee and we moved into an apartment and I had like notes on home improvement projects and a woodworking projects and things like that that I don't really need anymore because now we're in an apartment. So I took all of my home related stuff that was in my notes app and I just kind of dumped it in my archives folder. 
Now, all that stuff gets tossed in there, and if I ever need it, I know where to get it, and then I can put it back in my resources or areas folder if and when I do eventually buy a house. But for now, I don't really need that information, so it's locked in the archive, and I don't ever look at it. So there you have it. That's the PARA method, P-A-R-A, -A, uh, Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archives. It's an excellent way to organize your to-do list and your notes app. But what about the calendar? Does that fit in with the PARA method? Not really. I mean, the, the calendar is really what it sounds like. It's just a calendar. If you don't already have a digital calendar, I guess that is what this exercise really is, is by putting everything into a digital format, it's easy for other apps to integrate with it. And it's nice to have a digital system in which you can share with folks and is shared across all your different devices, right? So if you don't already use a calendar, I highly suggest you use that, even if it's something that really just keeps track of important dates. Personally, I use digital calendars so I can separate everything by color, so I can see it nice at a glance. So I have several different calendars on my Google Calendar, right? You can just create new calendars, right? And you can change them to a different color. So like I have my Star Wars business as a color, I have my other businesses as a color, I have personal like appointments and things as a, as a color, and like rest, I think, is as a color as well. So I can quickly kind of see, based on the color, what my day or my week is going to look like. Now maybe I'll do another video down the road on how to do a really cool calendar and break it up like that, but I think for now, just start using a digital calendar if you don't already. Put on there all of your appointments, all of your important dates, and if you're anything like me, set reminders for the stuff you're never going to forget, because I can't seem to remember anything even if I do put it on my calendar. Well, there you go. You have the apps, you have the organizational system, and if you've done it right, your notes and your to-do list apps look pretty similar. They have a pretty similar organizational structure, and I think that is really the power of a system like this. Because things are named and organized in the exact same fashion in both notes and to-do list items, it's very quick and easy to find exactly what you're looking for. So now you can say that you're one of those productivity people, I guess, if that's something you want to identify with. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please sure to let us know in the comments, and otherwise, we will see you in the next video.